Greetings, America. I am Killface. So I was in the middle of editing the Archer video when I realized I completely forgot about Frisky Dingo. The missing link between C-Lab 2021 and Archer. Yeah, it was a, an Adult Swim show. It centered around Killface, a supervillain who was using the Annihilatrix, a, basically a giant engine meant to push the Earth into the sun. It centers around the him trying to do that, the people around him, him trying to, I guess, make a name for himself as a supervillain. The first episode is basically him just trying to get a media buy in order to actually get people to know that he exists and that he is threatening them. Oh God. What? what? You don't think it's copyright? What? The Shelley. Who? Ozymandias, the poem by Shelley. Who, that, that receptionist chick? No, it depends when she wrote she it. She has balls out there. Shelley was a man, you Philistine. It's fine. Cheese it's fine. and crust. Where on earth did you go to school? USC Film School? Maybe you heard of it? I get, yeah, this is definitely before YouTube. In fact, the whole series is a little bit dated. While well, you're missing the Hannah Montana concert. What? Eighth row tickets at will call, claimable only with my picture ID. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah, but this is definitely the sort of middle bracket in the evolution between uh, Aqua Teen Hunger Force and C-Lab and Archer as the final product. You can see that they were starting to deal with maybe more, I'm saying this is there's this uh, huge buff white skull guy, um, but realistic and also their own original creations and a lot more assets as you can see. You wouldn't think of it, but actually a lot of work went into this series, considering what I imagine is like a shoestring budget. Um, but yeah, this is definitely like pre-Archer Archer. In fact, we have a proto-Archer in the form of Xander Cruz. He is Awesome X. He is sort of Killface's rival, or would-be rival. His whole spiel is that he wants to continue being Awesome X, even though he has defeated every supervillain. Uh, known to the city. But anyway, he wants to keep doing that. He also has a personal army called the Exticles? Exticles, yeah. Well, I mean, they changed their name a couple times, but yeah, they're known as the Exticles um, or x Knots or whatever. And he wants to keep his personal army, but in order to do, the, do that, he has to sort of create funding for them, which means he wants to sell action figures, which means he has to get the rights to sell Killface as his rival. So that's his sort of spiel. And Killface needs money because he wants to complete the Annihilatrix. So they, you think it would all be hammered out in one meeting, uh, but no, they go back and forth. Xander Cruz tries to trick uh, Killface into getting the money. Uh, Killface tries to rob Xander Cruz to uh, very little effect. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention that uh, Xander Cruz is uh, voiced by Adam Reed, the creator of Archer, the creator of this, but also the voice of Ray on Archer. But I have something really important to ask you. Uh, no, you can't have cheeseburgers, what? you big fatty. You know... Why are you so fat? But let's see, you also have uh, Kate Miller, who voiced White Debbie on C-Lab. She voices Grace Ryan, and then later on, Aunt Tagony. Arr, Aunt. What? <laughs> what? Uh, hey. Who is soon to give birth to what I can only assume will be a giant, hideous ant baby, uh. unwittingly sired by crippled billionaire tycoon Santa Cruz. God damn it. Um, you even have a proto-Pam. Um, a, a character voiced by Amber Nash, and she, she sort of uh, has her own sort of arc in the series, where she starts out as a, I guess, like a media consultant who, like, gets, like, really harassed by Killface, and then eventually just decides to go on a vendetta. You think your deceptoids or whatever can, uh, kill her? Mm. That might be a problem. Oh, oh my God! God. Oh, 
here comes the trouble. Like, that was, like, actually kind of jarring. In the first episode, there's a few, like, graphic deaths with, like, mutilation. And uh, that didn't bother me as much as just the sort of um, domestic violence that was, uh, that was shown to Pam. A direct... <laughs> Postcards! A direct mailing campaign, 20 cents per unit to one million households! <laughs> Get it, but I'm tearing his rights! This is the most cost-effective strategy! You made me do that! There are a few problematic elements to the series, of course, like... Uh, they try to be edgy with like uh, rude language, like South Parkish humor kind of thing. Um, a lot of unironic use of the word Chinaman. Like I don't know what this series sort of has a fixation with the Asian culture. I got big message for him. Tell him where my money, where my big return on investment. Just a damn minute, Mr. Man. Are you even Asian? <clears throat> Yeah, see, I, I kind of got this minority business loan. Screw it, shoot it. Hey. But you know, I will say one of the strengths of this series is that the characters go through some really radical changes and then have some like really weird arcs. And then they're, sometimes they're just like, most of them are killed off unceremoniously. I, I love her more than you do. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, then Django! <laughs> like ways you wouldn't be expecting. It's really weird seeing the whole thing back to back to back. Like I said, I used to watch like clips of this in college. I never watched it on TV while it was on. So there was not really a place where you could binge the whole thing together. Try iTunes. So yeah, it's, it's, it's really weird how they just take these very shallow archetypal characters and they can get you can get a lot of drama out of them by just doing not being afraid to take risks it's a lot like game of thrones only with more weed and dick jokes like there's this character sin and she starts out as sort of like Killface's uh left-hand woman and then he fires her so she goes and works for the x knots or x or or whatever they is as hooper and uh, she sort of rises above the ranks um, for reasons. Hmm, that's mysterious. Who keeps putting my cubby way down here? Uh and uh, just basically gains control over Xander Cruz's whole, whole operation as Awesome X. It's like really interesting. Then they kick off season two by actually showing that the Annihilatrix was turned on but it, it wasn't at full capacity, so it moved the planet just, you know, just a little bit away from the sun. And so Killface has now been given credit for curing global warming, which global warming was a concern then at the time. Uh, you know, you had Al Gore and, and he had Inconvenient Truth and you, you even had Katrina, which sort of I would pinpoint as the, the start of the the shift of all these very violent storms. But even then, people didn't, like, take it... It, it, it... People weren't really that concerned with it, even just, like, a decade ago. Or, God, two decades ago. Um, now it's actually kind of poignant, and if anyone were to actually cure global warming, they would be hailed as a hero. Just enough to stop global warming. <laughs> if you can believe that. That was the plan because God was too busy to help. But anyway, it's like, it was really interesting to see Killface try to move away from the image that he tried to cultivate in the first season as like this, like, intimidating supervillain. And now he's just, he, he's barely held together trying to act like he has empathy and concern. And of course, it all falls apart at the end of, of season two with actually like, a lot of oh damn moments. The damn Tauken! I will say that I think the first season is a little better. It's got a lot more flow to it. The second season uh, really drags in places, especially this whole election arc where both Killface and uh, Xander Cruz try to get elected president. Um, which, of course, actually ends in one of my favorite twists of all time. 
First question, both candidates, Article 2 of the United States Constitution. That's the one about tariffs. No, it's the one that says you have to be at least 35 years old and a U.S. citizen in order to be president. Well, that can't be right. I'm not even a legal resident. And I'm only 33. Oh, follow up? Why are you idiots wasting everybody's time when you can't even be elected? Thus rendering the entire exercise completely mute. And no one, like, bothered to even question the logistics of any of it uh i, I kind of love it but yeah so it's it's kind of like it's weird how this sort of is emblematic of a lot of different trends it's it's like despicable me before despicable me kind of like focusing on a villain's home life and his business it's um and also the second season does the office before the office does it or at least before it became like a like a saturated trope of of talking directly into the camera, um, because they're doing a documentary on his presidential run, so they have an excuse for it. <clears throat> and those are uh, uh, are they st are they stain resistant? Well, I certainly hope so. Yeah, what is that? So yeah, I I was just surprised how looking back, this is actually. It's, like a, it's actually a pretty decent put together show. It just kind of looks a little rough around the edges. And by looking a little rough around the edges, I mean, oh boy. Um, remember how I said the first season of Archer was like really stiff? Uh, well, everyone in this moves like their home planet needs them. That'll be all, Watley. If there's anything else, I can. Get out. Oh, I should also, I guess I can, I should mention like Killer Mike. Um, his music was featured a lot in season one, and he did a few, like, guest spots here and there. Uh, but he also became a major focus in season two as Killface's running mate, and, uh, he would also later on become the president. So that kind of, I don't know, it just, it, I just thought it was interesting how it really overlapped with a lot of his, uh, political interests. His foreign policy is unrealistic. Global His domestic warming. policy is non-existent. Global warming. Healthcare, Global warming. immigration, Global warming. welfare reform. Global warming. Man, do you even know what these terms mean? I... Okay, so the entire series ends on a cliffhanger with murder faces... Uh, kill faces. Murder faces. That's wrong show. Kill faces species... Sh kill faces species shows up uh, in a big spaceship and his mother starts berating him for not destroying the earth already. Kind of a little bit more overlap with Archer. And where are your clothes? Well, funny story. So, uh, yeah, I guess that was a big twist ending. Killface is an alien and he was sent to earth to destroy it. And uh, there's a whole species now. There's a whole bunch of them. Um, although the series didn't end that way, the series actually ended with a spinoff called The Exticles. It was, it only aired two episodes. I think the production was only two episodes. It was supposed to, it was a spinoff focusing on, you know, uh, Awesome X's private army, who without their leader, I guess, Killface and Xander Cruz got taken up in the spaceship. So they're gone and just leaving this whole kind of mercenary army to basically just kind of dick around. Looked a little better. I, there's only like maybe two clips online on YouTube right now. It, it looks like it could have been good. Guys, who was the designated driver last night? I put it on autopilot. But also looks like it, it could probably have worn out its welcome really fast. Some sort of raping gorilla? Good lord, it must have been raping. Um, overall, I would have to say this series is a lot more interesting than I uh, remember it. And maybe even give it credit for at the time. Um, there really weren't a lot of laugh out loud moments. Uh, some of my favorite bits include lampooning daytime TV and shameless marketing. Ooh, I, I like the scene in the hospital where all these just weirdos are lined up uh, waiting to get looked at. 
It's going down. I know, I know. Nothing hurts like a scrape. But you're being so brave. And soon they'll fix you up with some ointment and a nice big bandy. Right? Yes, we'll ask if they have Dora ones. And um, actually, you know what? Death Rabbits really did get a huge laugh out of me. But yeah, um, I'm, I just decided to take a little detour within our Archer retrospective and just kind of take a look at Frisky Dingo. Don't. Don't you push that bull sir, on the floor? I'll go back to Arizona. We can't ever go back to Arizona! Cat party! <laughs>